On here, I'm just, yes, you got the main screen. So we are I live. Got it. <laughs> I am so, so excited about you coming on tonight. And I know that your story is going to just touch so many lives. And uh, I just want you to feel free and talk like, and just yes, be mine. That's the thing about this podcast. Just be mine. Because what you are saying, yes, we need it, okay? <laughs> yes, ma'am. So yes, now, ma you can just, what, how this works is uh, the first 30 minutes, uh, you don't have to watch the time, I'll do that. If the first 30 minutes, yeah. you're just telling your story, and and then and then I'll, I'll uh, come in when people start in the chat section and tell you what people are okay. saying in the chat section. And then we just, we still gotcha. talking. So uh, we just okay. going to do it. I'm going to say it like you say it. We just going to go get it. <laughs> we going to go get it. Okay. We going to go with the flow. We going to go with the flow. <laughs> okay, let's go. <laughs> you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. Okay. Let's roll. <laughs> do I start now? You start now. <laughs> okay. How you doing, ain't let try? I'm doing good, doing good. Excited about you being on here. Excited about you telling your story. I'm, excited. And I'm glad to be here. Okay. <laughs> glad to be here, glad to be here. Yes. I don't know where you want to start at or how far you want to go back. You, you can go, go all the way <laughs> back, you start where you want to start, and then it's going to end up wherever it ends up. <laughs> okay, so. Because we got all age groups. Let me just start by Okay, well, let me just start at the beginning, man. So, you know, um, I probably have done and been involved in most of the things that the youth are doing these days. That's why I don't shun up on them mm -hmm. or anything, you know, from the gang banging, uh -huh. selling drugs, uh -huh. wanting to be a part of some, mm -hmm. you know, being a follower and all these things for the wrong reasons. So, you know, coming up early in childhood, you know, I was rebellious, mm -hmm. um, didn't really have a father figure mm -hmm. the streets was my father figure yeah mom did the best she could mm -hmm. ain't his sisters cousin everybody did the best they could you know uh -huh. but uh you know as young men we all grow up and want to be the man oh, or yeah. you know be protectors or providers mm -hmm. especially when you don't have a father figure in yeah. the house per yeah. se uh -huh. so um you know so i jumped off the porch pretty early uh -huh. um Mostly selling drugs and game banging. Okay. You know, as a way of life, you know. Um, I had a great mother uh -huh. and she did what she could, worked three jobs. So, you know, none of that, all this was by choice. I had a very supportive grandmother, mother, uh -huh. sister, and everybody. So, you know, I did everything under the sun, you know, and it just seemed like I had the bad luck. I stayed going to jail. Okay. That's so, okay. fast forward a little bit. So, you know, I went to, TYC uh -huh. for drugs and shooting. I had a little man complex, so I, you know, I was game bang, wanted to shoot them guns and, uh -huh. and sell drugs. I went to TYC, uh -huh. I stayed in there a year. Okay. I got out, um, I dropped out of school. We actually didn't drop out. The judge made me get my GED okay. at 15. Okay. I did that. By me doing that, it made me feel like I was super grown man. All right. So I just hit the streets hard and sell a little, little more drugs, you yeah. know, moved out on my own. Yeah. Um, you know, got caught up in the street life. Uh -huh. Did that. Mm, I think at 19. Okay. So I caught well for two, three years. I was catching drug case at the drug case, shooting case, you know, growing uh -huh. up I'm from Lake Road, Lamar, Texas. Yeah. So, you know, um we was pretty known in Lamar, you know, for game banging and selling drugs and things yeah. like that. Hey, that dirty was people from Lake Road. Uh -huh. <laughs> that was life. That was my life. That's what I enjoyed. Uh -huh. At the time. Yeah. At the, time. the females, the money, the drugs at the time. That's what yeah. I enjoyed. It was yeah. fun. You know, uh yeah. So I caught three more drug cases. I went to the penitentiary in 2001. I got out of TYC 2001. So 2003, I went back to the penitentiary. I got out in 2005, uh -huh. October 2005. Mm -hmm. um, got out, got back to doing what I was doing. Yeah. Stayed out 11 months. 
Okay. Each time I went to the feds. So okay. I went to the feds mm -hmm. uh, from 2006 to 2012 uh -huh. due to a, um, the crack law came on. Hold on. My okay. wife, I got out. That's okay. Baby, I'm on this podcast. Okay. So, um, um, so make a long story short, I went to the feds. So I did my time in there, and this was, um, you know, the most extensive of the times I did in six years. Uh -huh. I had nine years. Okay. Um, unfortunately, you know, with the, the blessing out of the situation that I couldn't take for granted is because during my incarceration, and now, you know, Obama came with these um, drug mandate mm -hmm. laws. So when I came home, somebody set me up. Uh, of course, I went down for cocaine, crack again, and, and a gun. Mm -hmm. So I got blessed with the crack law which knocked off like 30 months off my sentence. Oh, okay. um, so 2012, mm -hmm. I came home from, I was supposed to come home 2014. Mm -hmm. And you know, the years down that was hard, you know, because it's a different way of life living. And that's probably what opened my eyes because I naturally seen, like it's different from the streets to in jail again. Like, so uh -huh. I was young, early twenties. So they sent me to a USP due to my gang violence, me being so young uh -huh. and, uh, my background. Uh-huh. Walked in there. So when I went to USP Polo, I, I jumped off the bus. As soon as we got in USP, you can't have, you know, people, no snitches, or you telling on people because they would naturally kill you over there. Oh. And you know, um, we getting off the bus and the people's, you know, they like, hey, if you ever told on anybody in life, don't go on this yard because they will kill you. Like it's different mm -hmm. from state penitentiary. Oh, okay. It's different from you know all the different stuff. So mm -hmm. I make a long story short. So when I get there, here I am. I'm still young. Uh -huh. You don't know, got a nine year sentence, whatever. When we getting off the bus, we going out there, they push you on the yard and the feds is like all open. So you have people from all over the world, from DC, mm -hmm. uh, Louisiana, Atlanta, Texas. So you with a bunch of people with different different layers of the world. Mm -hmm. And um they pushed us out, man. The first thing is, hey, where you from? Where you from? Where you from? From Texas. Okay, you'll keep over there. Uh -huh. Man, I seen the dude. As soon as they pushed him out the door, man, the guys was waiting on him. Oh my they God. stabbed him about 30, 40 times. So I see the man get killed. As soon as we get off the bus, somebody that just came in with me. Because, uh -huh. again, you know, he had told on some people. So, yeah. you know, I'm like, I got to thank them now. I'm like, man, this ain't where I'm supposed to be at, man. You know, I'm a gangster. You know, it's gangster in the streets, but this is, different. this is a different war we fight. Yeah. You know, and, yeah, I want to make it home. My yeah. Family. Yeah. In one piece. Yeah. Know, I don't have enough time. I don't got no life. Mm -hmm. A lot of them dudes that have life sentences because DC don't have uh, state prisons. You know, everybody over there go to, you oh, know, okay. feds and stuff. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, Due to all that situation, that was that was that was one situation. Then I get mm -hmm. there, and then we had to start being reliable. So if you're from Texas or things like this here, uh -huh. what you do affect the other people from Texas. So if he get into it, somebody, you get into it, and they call them cars. Oh, so okay. one person from Texas get into it with a person from Louisiana or something, it's Texas against Louisiana. So it's all cars. You come out here, you get your knives. You got to do all this stuff. Like, you uh -huh. know, it's, 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 it's different. Yeah. Oh, damn. Sitting there, I'm like, whoa, okay, this is different. Yeah. Then I'm in away from home, you know. I'm mm -hmm. not in not state my family, not down the street. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not down the street. I right. gotta catch a flight to come see you. Like when they ship us, they put us on a plane to ship us to the penitentiary. Oh. Yeah, the movie Corn Air. Just think about the movie Corn Air. I don't know if you ever seen it. But, I have. You know, they put you on a, a, a jail plane. What is it called? Convict Air. So they put you on a uh, airplane with nothing but convicts and y'all chain together and they take you around the world because you're stopping at all these penitentiaries because you can get positioned anywhere in the U.S. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. so um, make a long story short, that was probably the biggest I opened. I'm like, whoa, mm -hmm. this, is, this is a different type of uh, <laughs> doing time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, and then at the time, like, man, I, I, I haven't, I, I'm, I'm in there and I'm, hearing stories about these guys with this money sign, I'm just feeling out of place. Cause yeah. I ain't seen half of the stuff y'all seen mm -hmm. around the world. Uh -huh. So let's move on from now. Okay. That's, you know, that's the dark, that's yeah. the dark. So we're gonna go back, you know, um, so make a long story short, um, Obama passed the crack law in 11. Uh -huh. And he kicked me out in March of 2012. Didn't know I was coming home. Mm -hmm. Say, we gotta get you to the halfway house. 
I was in Beaumont, me and uh my, my, my partner squat uh -huh. and uh on gas and so we was on the rick yard and the case manager called me. He was like, Man, hey, mm -hmm. we gotta get you to the halfway house. You going home, they they, they approved your uh two point to get your crack off. Okay. So you know, I gotta do something, so I'm going home, okay. Mm -hmm. I get home. Mm -hmm. Um when I get home, so you know, coming up hustling, we always had the thing I said, man. Now, I never worked at McDonald's or fast food or none of that. You uh -huh. know? So I came home perfectly actually looking to to, to work, you mm -hmm. know, somewhere that I said I wouldn't. Mm -hmm. um, just so happened, uh, my cousin, um, very close friend and cousin, Lakeisha Jones. Uh -huh. um, Keisha, we call her uh -huh. Yay, my neighborhood. She's been managing at McDonald's since we knew it even when we was doing what we was doing she's been working at mcdonald's for 20 years yeah. and she had a little pool and i was calling out i said kimpo man give me a job she said man you ain't gonna work you ain't gonna work mm -hmm. i said no nah, i'm gonna work i'm gonna work you know i ain't gonna make you look bad you know i got a main thing i give people my word i stand on it that's I always been like that yeah so she's like all right i'm gonna get you a job she got me a job at mcdonald's that's on NASA. Uh -huh. i was working six to two every day for a year okay and um uh, I probably would have quit or stopped uh -huh. if I didn't give up my word or it was gonna make her look bad. But yeah. I stuck it out. Uh -huh. I wrote it out for a full year. I was having trouble getting my twit card to get in the plants because of my background. Uh -huh. And um my classmate, Carla Scott, she uh -huh. wrote me some uh, appeals uh -huh. and helped me and helped me get my twit card, which is after a year. Uh -huh. So um I got my twit card and Another blessing part about that, I posted on Facebook. I'm like, man, I got my PR, I got my Twit card. Mm -hmm. My close friend, which like my brother Jason Mary, he called me like, man, you got your Twit card. I'm gonna go get my Twit card. Uh huh. So he went and got his Twit card. Okay. So from that point, like, we got Kyle for a job. Uh huh. We went. And it made it easier because every job we took, we went together. So we was like pushing each other. He'll stay on my butt. Like, mm -hmm. hey, come on, what you need to do? We finna go take those, we finna go get this money. Mm -hmm. And at this point, I don't think he's taking me a hundred percent serious. And I don't, don't think I'm taking him a hundred percent serious, but we got a competition relationship. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna try to push hard to me, or he gonna push hard to me. And it worked out for the best for both of us. Uh -huh. so I, I, I gotta speak on that, you know. Um, yeah. But so we, we we did this years for like two three years. We went on the same jobs, you know. We went to the same places, you know. They mm -hmm. knew if if he go, I'm going. If I go, he going. You know, mm -hmm. that's, that's that's how we do job. Yeah. I might take my uh my layoff earlier than him because he gonna stay. You know? Yeah. And, uh, mm -hmm. I might come up, but he gonna he gonna make me feel bad. I'm you know take my job. So so I stayed at McDonald's for a year. Uh huh. Right? Um, got my Twit card, I had a relationship with a lot of people, so I had a lot of plant jobs. Mm -hmm. Here and there, out of town, um, doing this and that. So, at the time, probably at the time, I'm not walking 100% straight at the time. So, yeah. let me just say that too, at the time, I'm not walking 100% straight. So, uh -huh. um, you know, but I, I, I take risks, I'm a businessman, so um, yeah. my opportunity came up for me to um, buy a house mm -hmm. for, I think I paid 37000 thousand dollars. But at this time, you know, my brother, we had a, we was doing stuff with the cars already. So I was, I skipped one point. I was going to the auctions and getting cars and stuff. Okay. And, uh, selling cars uh -huh. and fixing them and flipping cars. You know, I'm, I'm a car fanatic. Since I was 15, 16, I had four, five cars. Uh -huh. I don't care if they was hoodoos. Yeah. They gonna get you from point A to point B. <laughs> now I'm just a different level. I always a car fanatic. Yeah. You know, when I was little, I was a car fanatic. Uh -huh. You know, I like to wake up and pick what I drive. Yeah. So um, anything that would cause, you know, was was really exciting to me. Mm -hmm. You know, um, cause period. Mm -hmm. So um, when we was going to the auctions, getting the cars fixing them and selling them, mm -hmm. you know, um, doing that. So then, um, what did I do next? I pretty much stuck with the car. So we had a dealership, uh -huh. you know, um, 
Well, we had a friend with a dealership and then he showed us the game on how to get out of a dealership and we got a dealership. Okay. So all this was, it wasn't really taking off. It was, you know, paying bills, making ends meet, you know, when I went in the plants or whatever the case mm -hmm. may be. Mm -hmm. So um, after that, I did the car lot. I um, I always wanted to do real estate and mm -hmm. you know uh, house stuff. So I put it on my mind to go around people. You know, um, some people I was locked up with. You know, I built a lot of relationships with different people. Uh -huh. um, I built relationships in the halfway house I was home. So, you know, to me, every situation I used as a learning utensil mm -hmm. for as it like the feds, you know, I'm I'm just the type of person everybody knows I'm gonna find a positive out in a negative situation. Yeah. So mm -hmm. being that I didn't go to college in the world, I actually used my federal incarceration as college because what it did was put me around a bunch of people with book sense uh -huh. but no common sense and uh -huh. So with them I soaked up as much book sense I can around different things as far mm -hmm. as finances, um, real estate, how this works, how that works, mm -hmm. um, car companies. And I read a bunch of books, the books, the books that successful people read. Yeah. Okay. You know, uh, it's all about comprehension. It's all about comprehension at that point. So after you read the book, you have people that actually have done this mm -hmm. and you start seeing it and start making sense to you. Mm -hmm. And I always been a I always been some type of hustle. Yeah. So, you know, and I have to explain the people that the hustle don't change, just the product. Okay, okay. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? Like I'm about to ask you. Hustle, you the hustle. I'm just about yeah. to kind of elaborate on that some more, cause I, you know, with me not understanding, I want to see it through your eyes and, and then the viewers. You know, cause we, cause we just want to. Okay. Know. Okay. So let me let me let me let me break it down to you. Okay. real layman terms okay so just like this when you were a kid and you lived at school um for, for instance for me we used to we used to have the cool cups we used to have a candy store yeah around my neighborhood yeah. and the product we had a candy store uh-huh so you was gonna hustle to sell your candies and your cool cups and all this snap right uh -huh. okay that's a hustle okay you got people who clean shoes for a living yeah. Okay. That's a hustle. Okay. That's a hustler. They gonna do it to keep wanting to make some money. Okay. Um, just like us in the dark. When I sold crack, uh -huh. sold whatever it is. Yeah. It was a hustle. Yeah. So you had to do something to appease the people. Uh -huh. To make them want to shop with you. It's something that you have to do different to make people want to deal with you. Okay. It's either your services being better than the next person, mm -hmm. or your prices being cheaper than the next person. So that's what really lays out a hustler in you. Okay. So it don't matter if you sold crack. Mm -hmm. Cool cups, um, candy, paper towel. You know that candy. You know they got a saying that say I can sell water to a well. Okay. If you got the right conversation mm -hmm. and the right marketing presentation, mm -hmm. you can sell anything. Okay. So that's what the meaning of the hustle don't change, but mm -hmm. the product does. Yes. Okay. So now I pimp real estate. Mm -hmm. I pimp my body shop. Yeah. I pimp my transportation company. Yeah. The piece of club and I pimp the record label. Yeah. Because okay. you're gonna push what you believe in. Okay. And one thing about life is what we've learned is again, I go back to I'm a car head and I uh -huh. love houses. I like to see products finished and how they come out. I like customizing and doing stuff. Yeah. So if you find something that you like to do, uh -huh. you'll never work again a day in your life. Okay. If you start getting paid for your hobbies or uh -huh. things that you like, it's not even called work anymore because you're gonna get up and do them anyway. Okay. So the only way you don't get tired of what you're doing is, is doing what you like to do. You have to be comfortable and that's the only way you're gonna give it your all and that's the only way you're gonna be successful. Uh -huh. Now don't get me wrong, I've tried multiple businesses. Yeah. I've invested in multiple things that have not went right, but you can't give up on yourself. Okay. You can't give up on what you believe in. Success is about taking risks. Yes. Yes. Nothing happens overnight, and a lot of people don't succeed mm -hmm. because they're scared to fail. Yeah. But failure is not bad. Mm -hmm. You have to turn your lesson into mm -hmm. a blessing. I if that makes it. sense. That makes you can find positive. 
you can find for everything negative, you can find a positive situation out of it. Mm-hmm. For instance, my incarcerated, I used to wonder why, man, why am I always getting caught? Why am I always doing, why people always telling on me are doing this and that? Yeah. And I had to figure it out. Maybe it was a way of God saving your life. Because yeah. if I was on the streets all the time, he couldn't mold me to be who I was. Or I might've been caught up in some other stuff. Yeah. And got situated and couldn't even understand or, you know, potentially understand what he was preparing me for to be successful. Uh-huh, yeah. You, you understand what I'm saying? So understand. everything happens for a reason. Yes. And it's not for a lifetime, it's for a season. Okay. So it's what you do after that. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, you yes. Know, you have to weather the storm. You have to go through something to appreciate something else. Uh-huh, yes. I get it you now. Know? I get it. Like, it, you want to appreciate, it's a lot of people that's successful because their family was successful and they got left this and that, but they really don't appreciate the success. They feel like that is... um. It, 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 it's uh, what, what do you call it when people feel like it's it's for them already? They deserve that, or they, you know, some people just feel like it's privilege. Like, privilege. Like, you come, privilege. 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 Mm-hmm. That's a good word. Privilege. So when you, you come from, like, when you actually can sit back and understand the bottom, you appreciate the top to keep yeah. yourself from going back to the bottom. Uh huh. You, uh-huh. you understand? What I'm saying? Uh, yeah. But also on another note of that, if you go back to the bottom, you know what you need to do to get back where you need to be. Yes. Yes, I I have a I want to kind of ask a question uh, because I have a big concern for young people today, especially our young boys. And if you could say something to them, what would what would you feel like you would want to say to them? Because you know they at these ages they think they know it all and I just see I see a lot of trouble coming and they're killing them every day so yes yes um man I, I you know what I'm gonna keep it all the way honest with you I my point of view on that is I want you to man a lot of time the only thing that say you mm-hmm. is a praying mother or a grandmother okay, okay. because us as being young men, where we come from, is even though it's way worse than not. Mm-hmm. A lot of time they have to go through it. See, men mature a little bit later than women, yeah. so mm-hmm. you know yeah. you can talk to us till we blue in the face. I'm telling you, you can tell me I had all the right people telling me all the right things. Uh huh. Uh huh. But generally, until you get tired of being tired. Uh-huh. First of all, let me, let me tell you, I'm just, I'm just keeping this, this to us. We can say everything in the world and show I like, want you to. Anybody, we can say the right way a, a thousand times. Uh-huh. But man, first of all, I would speak to the people around them and ask for more support, moral support and prayer. Uh-huh. Because a lot of that has to do, a lot of guys, young men in situations because they technically don't have the support. Uh-huh. We can give them all the support we want from here. Yeah. When they going home, tragic situations or this around, and they just have nobody else around. Uh-huh. They're gonna we, we jump into survival mode. Okay. And sometimes the, the survival mode can put you in death mode. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's good for you to say again. That's just like again. Look at our way of living, and then you go to River Oaks. Yeah. If I'm in River Oaks, I can tell you. Everything that sounds good, but guess what you're gonna say? Mm-hmm. When you leave here, you're going back to River Oaks. Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. But for the young men, like, only thing I can tell them is, hey man, keep putting one foot in front of yourself every day and believe in yourself. Uh-huh. Don't, don't wait on nobody to do nothing for you. Like, mm-hmm. if it's something that you believe in, don't let nobody tell you that you cannot do it. Uh-huh, yeah. Every success story starts by word of mouth okay. and believing in yourself. You have to believe in yourself before anybody else believes in you. Mm-hmm. And don't let the critic tell you, man, I was the, one, one thing I did, like, I look like a totally different person now, but I'm the same person. I took my diamonds out of my mouth. Uh-huh. Um, I started wearing my pants on my butt a little different. Like, you have to change, you have to sell yourself. Okay, yeah. You have, you have to sell yourself. Mm-hmm. And I'm not talking about for a price, but you have to present yourself 
in a fashion to where a person will listen to what you have to say. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. It's cool to be you. Yeah. Yeah. But you have to get somebody's attention mm -hmm. to hear and show that you believe in yourself. And then somebody will believe in you. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's 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 it's, it's a real saying, it's true. If you hang around five crackheads, uh -huh. you're lying to be the sixth one. Yeah, yeah. I feel like if you hang around five millionaires, you're gonna find a way to be the sixth one on that way too. Yeah, yeah. It's the company you keep. Yeah. If you hang around people that's doing this every day, at some point you're gonna learn that'll be some of that because we have energy that rub off on each other. Yeah. So surround yourself around people and things that you want to be a part of. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of times you can get caught up in negative energy and be around a person so love it rub off in the bad way. So if you're around a lazy person all day long, at some point you're going to get lazy because you feel like, hey, Joe do it. Yeah. And Joe, Joe's still all right. You lay around and do it all day long, but I don't feel like going. Yeah, yeah. But if you got people around you and, and you talking to people that always got something going on, guess what you're going to try to do? You're going to try to find something to fit in and get you something going on. Uh-huh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's the that's the, that's the most important thing that I ever learned, and it makes sense now. In order to change you, you have to change your people, places, and things. Yeah, your I got all environment. Nobody gave me that. Mm -hmm. the environment. Mm -hmm. You control that. Your yeah. destiny. You yeah. have to. You have to quit living in fear mm -hmm. of what's out there. Uh huh. You know, you have to quit living in fear. You have to change your eyesight. You have to have a broader brain. See, a lot of people only think here. Uh -huh. The sky's the limit. There's no roof. Right. There's no roof. No roof. So if you get you you, you get tired, mm -hmm. when you get tired enough, and, and, and it has a lot to do with maturity. Yeah. I mean, we mature at a, at, at a later age of state. Yeah. But when you grow into the person that you really want to be, uh -huh. and you start seeing different things, uh -huh. that's why I take a lot of my people out with me. Hey, man, this is how you got to do, do this, A, B, and C. Yeah. But I let them know that Nothing I have or what you see me with came overnight. Right, right. I naturally put work in. Mm -hmm. Like it's no cheat code. Yeah. Like you have to put the work. Uh huh. You have to put the work in. Yeah. You have to wake up and find something to do because one thing about success is more bills. Mm -hmm. More bills come increase income. Yeah. So at the end of the day, uh -huh. you have to find a way to keep making that money to keep what you have. Yeah, yeah. You know. And, and it go back to like. I you speaking to me, you know, because when I got ready to start doing the podcast, what you are saying to me is inspiring me because I had all of those emotions. You know, I was like, my age, who won't listen to me? I knew who I was going to listen to me. Yeah. I went, I did. It, it don't even matter who listens to you. You gain one or a hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just like this here. Say I'm a record label. I, if I got a contract and they, they book me for a show, right? Mm -hmm. I don't care if it's one person in the crowd uh -huh. or we fill it out because I'm still going to get my message across. I'm still going to get my check. Yeah, yeah, I got you. You, 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 you understand what I'm saying? Uh -huh. You can't, you know, it's, it's, you know, a lot of people with society and social media and stuff like that, it's built a brand of being uh, the popular people, mm -hmm. um, you know, but actually, we use it on a on a rim for a bunch of negativity, but but actually, this is your commercial. Uh huh. Yeah. Like you naturally can be who you want to be. You can reach millions and millions of people. Like we grew up, we had to watch commercials to find out what was coming on. You can actually get on here. This a wave on what you use it for. Yeah. So you use your voice. Yes. For how you you know, for instance, you've been helping us since we was little. <laughs> like you practically raised me for it, you know, and you always been. Open arms, yeah. smiling, like doing it for that. So mm -hmm. we know about that, but the world need to know about that. Okay. You go to college, they gonna tell you, "Oh, don't ain't lecture." You ain't lecture to a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> to a lot of people, you yeah. inspired a lot of us. You know, and you, you, you know, you always came with open arms, no matter what we did. You knew what we did and what we had going on, but yeah. you never judged. You've never turned us down. Your door was always open. Yes. At any time to come, hey, and you was gonna come save us in the middle of the night if we need. <laughs> So at the end of the day, uh -huh. like, you know, so so it goes, you know, more people need to know that now nah, it's naturally people out here mm -hmm. that 
will listen. Uh-huh. And you just let them know what's going on. Yeah. And, and, and that's a lot of people. A lot of people don't know that. They don't want to tell it. Yeah. I just had somebody to tell me, call me the other day. I was going inside the building after lunch, right? And so the young man said, <clears throat> Grandma, like that. And, you know, I didn't know he was talking to me. And he said, uh, I thought he was talking to the lady in front of me. He said, Grandma. And, and so I, you know, I stopped because I'm thinking they know Brandon. And so Brandon's friends call me Grandma. <laughs> and I answered, you know. So, yeah, you're right. Okay, I think we froze <laughs> on this one. So, uh, everything you're saying is so true. You hear me? Hello? something happened and I'm trying to see what what happened what happened yeah. Doctor, why don't you send him a text message because I think it's his phone that's frozen okay okay I'll send it now. <clears throat> is gonna call him back in okay. but I this is Jackie I'm I'm logging back in because this is what I do um and I'm back, but I just want to say, I hope everyone stays on and listens and that we can get Mike back on because uh, his story is amazing. And I want to tell you, okay, his, okay, all right. His story crosses, okay. crosses okay. boundaries of all races, creeds, colors, and religions. Don't ever think that he's not, he's you are back. safe. From that line. Huh, he's logging back in? Okay. Mm -hmm. He uh, lost Wi Fi. Mm -hmm. I just, yeah, I want, I'm, I'm just, I'm filling in the blank space. That's but I just want to say, mm -hmm. people, they, they want, they try, people try to assign, uh, however you want to call it, make, make, make assignments that, oh, he's a, he was, he's a black kid raised by a single mother, therefore he's bad. Mm -hmm. No, no. Mm -hmm white, black, Asian, Hispanic, it doesn't matter. It's your personal whatever's inside of you. Mm -hmm. And that's what Mike's okay. telling us. Okay, he's and, back. And Mike, am I right that that people like to assign, they say, oh, he was a young, he's a young black man raised by a single mother, therefore he was bad. But that's not true because not your mama scale. was a good woman. She's Electra, great. a great woman. Mm -hmm. yeah. and there are, and, and in that prison, I know I know people who have been incarcerated, and I know people who've come out of that incarceration and didn't learn anything that what you learned. Yeah, it'll Thank become you. a lifestyle for them. See, my yes. thing is this here. My biggest thing is, man, I want to take care of the people who took care of me. My grandmother just passed, but she's always been in my corner. Just like mm -hmm. I told her, she's never had nothing to say, even when I'm in the wrong. She's like, you, ain't, you all right, you good, we got you, this mm -hmm. and that. Because she understood life, and that's how life works. You have to go through certain things. You have to, it's inevitable. Like, you know. There was, there's people, I, I am positive, in that penitentiary from every background mm -hmm. possible. Every, back, every, every background. Back. So don't think that it'll never happen to my son. It'll never happen to me. It'll never, my, my child would never, would that's never why I speak. go down that's why, I have, that's why I have to speak for the parents too. Like at yeah. the end of the day, don't blame, don't blame yourself. Don't like blame at the end kids. of the day, it's rebellion is in kids. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's, and it's, it's in Every us. kid, every kid. Every kid, so every kid has some type of way. Mm -hmm. That's why I say, like, I, I had flaws in the streets, but I've never, I've always been respectable. Yes, man. Like, I came mm -hmm. up with the right morals and codes to do everything, mm -hmm. you know. But I just, the streets became what I wanted to run to. Mm -hmm. It was so, cooler at the time mm -hmm. because I didn't know any better. The yeah. voice to to say that I'm saying that you're saying to these to the parents and and the mothers and the fathers, the brothers, sisters, grannies is. What you're saying is, don't stop loving them. Uh, and don't stop trying. Don't stop being an example. 
Teach by your example, for heaven's sake. No matter what happens, that mm -hmm. child gonna always come back and say, you know what, mama, daddy? You was right. It might not be, you don't know what time it's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. When they get tired of bumping their hair, like, mm -hmm. at least I know you was always there for me. Mm -hmm. You know, cause they, don't, don't think, don't get it twisted. We remember that through every situation mm -hmm. and all this and that. Mm -hmm. We know, you know, when we get in that, who, that phone number to call, mm -hmm. yeah. or who gonna have that money on the phone to call, who gonna send that <laughs> for them Zoom Zooms and Wham Whams and that, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> And, and, and it's a lot of people, like, it's a lot of parents I see, and I go through with my kids, it's a lot of parents I see that blame they self, yeah. or they could have did better, or, you know, it's nothing you could have did. <laughs> it's nothing you could have did, you know. Yeah. Mike, I'm going to tell you, I know for a fact there are parents that could have done better. I'm no, it, 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 no, no, but no. But not every course. parent No, is of course. Blame. But I'm saying the ones I, I know. No, let me let, let me rephrase that. Like you just said, yeah. Okay. It's a lot of parents that can do better. That can but do better. But for the ones mm -hmm. that are loving on their children, mm -hmm. providing on them, supporting yes. them mentally, and what's my call? Mm -hmm. Don't give up on that because you will look at somebody, you know, and it be like, like man, such such don't do nothing for their kids. Do all this, but they love it, dirty drawers. Yeah. You know, but I'm over here doing all this, and this, and I can't get along with my child. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? That's the point I, I was making when I was saying that. But. And that is a good point. That is so great. That is you know, so great. Yeah. yeah, that's that's it. Keep I'm, loving them. Keep, keep teaching them. Keep, and, yeah, and what I want to say is whether you realize it or not, and I'm sure you're a parent now, mm -hmm. your kids are watching you. Whether you think they are or not, they're mm -hmm. watching you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Be the example that you, that you're, that you don't, you can't. <laughs> Don't just talk the talk. You got to walk the walk. Yeah. And that's the thing with me. Uh -huh. I show my children, my stepkid, I show them my flaws and everything. Yeah. So yeah. they get the real me. Like, I'm not hiding my hand over here uh -huh. and telling you to do this and that. Hey, nah, this is where I make mistakes at. Yeah. What I do, I still, you know. And there are people out there who do become success successful despite, despite not having any family support despite yeah that. yeah yeah despite that i mean that, 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 i feel like i feel like your own i feel like guts. i feel like that's another fire in you that's that's mm -hmm. an extra piece of fire in you mm -hmm. to make sure you be successful because mm -hmm. you don't have anything else to mm -hmm. depend on or rely on mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. mentally financially or emotionally i don't have anything to rely on uh financially yeah but the, the emotional and the love that i got was priceless yeah you know, you know what I'm saying? yeah my love that i that has made me successful in life has come from my friends okay has come from because i've always been somebody who's had friends i, I i'm a i'm just a people person. like a little person right the energy and, and i am so thankful for the exact like electra my friends mm -hmm. that keep me grounded and yes. despite because my brother went your path i'm just going to tell you he started out on the path that you started on right. he gave up rather than fight the fight he shot himself in the head yeah. That was not, that wasn't, in my opinion, that was a very selfish thing to do. He could have fought the fight mm -hmm. just because we didn't have that example, didn't mean. Look at, look at people who don't have that example. And, and, and I want to say to people, be the example. Don't just talk. Yeah. If you, if all you're doing is talking, you're not walking. Mm -hmm. So talk the talk. But walk the yep. walk. Yeah. Exactly. That's, That's what you're time. doing. That is what you are doing. And I'm just, I'm, I'm just, I want, I want to just blow this up on a billboard. I want everyone to hear you. Yes. I want to put it on Times Square. I don't know if they listen to me, but maybe I'll ask them if they will. Yeah. But I want everyone to hear what you're saying. But your you message, got, don't give up. Yeah. It's all, it's all about the grace of God, man, mm -hmm. and, 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 the, and the prayers, man. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, because yeah. I, I, it's no way possible. It's, it's about my whole support system. Yeah, my wife, my kids. It's, it's just, just the stuff that keep me mm -hmm. ticking and kicking every day. Yeah, you know, my family mm -hmm. and everything around me. You know, when when I came home, and you know, I started. My grandmother just passed in December this uh, last year at her birthday, but she told me she's like, you know, for your people to see you turn your life around and. Um, mm -hmm. You know, be successful and, and and you know do some of the things that they always try to be up to be. You know, it's a, it's a weight mm -hmm. lifted. Like you know that, that that's that's more than gold treasures in the world is priceless. You know, yes. and, and, and at the end of the day, mm -hmm. it's like um, 
you can't never be done. You can't, man. I, the sky's the limit. Yeah. Like, I still don't feel like I'm where I'm supposed to be at shit. Yeah. Contrary to what everybody else believe, I still, I'm still kicking myself and patting myself on the back to, to keep going, to keep yeah. pushing like, nah, yeah. that's that's not it. You know, yeah. and, and I tell people all the time that, you know, you have to have 10 different hustles. Like, it don't stop that. If you read, you know, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, um, mm. the 48 Laws of Power, you know, teach you a lot about life. I play chess, I, I love chess, I play chess. So, you know, and to me, that's the game of life. You know, every move has to be calculated, you know. Um, um, well, look at look at the last year, Mike. I mean, this pandemic, you had to have hustles going or else the, you know, if you only had one hustle going, that it pandemic would have beat you beat would've, you down. Would have told me down. Yeah. And you know that that that's the biggest thing for the you know the life I created for you know my family and everybody else. You know I knew I had to you know. And, and like I say, I pat myself on back for being a real man, a real parent, yeah. a real you know supporter and provider. Yeah. Um. You know. Um. At the end of the day, survival kick in. But see, and that goes back to what people say. Like, you know, we gotta we gotta. A, a, a mean saying in the communities in the communities where I come from that man I'm going to put food on the table by any means necessary mm-hmm. well you know if that mean going to McDonald's that don't mm-hmm. mean kicking in the door raw and ball yeah. that don't mean uh go, going to grab this and take what you work for yeah. you know that, yeah. that makes up for us I mean that, that 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 you have to take that again mm-hmm. it's a positive and every negative we use so yeah. you can turn around and you pick and choose the way that you want to mm-hmm. use that yeah. Mm-hmm. The way you want to comprehend that, mm-hmm. you know, and then in our community is just so much, Oof. you know, it's just too much hate or, or yes. people feeling like you don't deserve what you have or mm-hmm. that should have been you and them. But I tell everybody, man, you got the same 24 hours in a day. The risk <laughs> I take, you're not going to take. Yeah. When you when you go left and you should have went right, you got to blame yourself. Mm-hmm. Don't be mad at me because I didn't stay stagnant or yeah. still. Yeah. And, and like what you said earlier, Mike, didn't you say earlier that you don't even he, there are you tried a bunch of different stuff that didn't work mm-hmm. and that you keep trying and but that doesn't make you stop you just keep keep going mm-hmm. you find the next thing you try the next thing until you find what works mm-hmm. you have and to find what works the key yeah, yeah find you have to works. find what works for you for you what works yeah. for me don't yeah. work for you what works mm-hmm. for you don't work for me mm-hmm. yeah. it's not going to be the same energy Mm-hmm. Uh, connected exactly. to anything yeah. you're doing. I tell everybody, like, you have to be real with yourself yeah. and see what you feel comfortable doing. Mm-hmm. What scares you don't scare me. What scares me don't scare you. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So you yeah. have to find your fears. Uh-huh. You have to find your boundaries. You have to find your thing, and you got to cross them off your list. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, now, mind you, let me go back to what I said when I, when I came home. I had a five-year plan. They made me. I was on federal probation. They made me. Hey, what you need to do? What you, what's your goals? Small goals and big goals for five years. Mm-hmm. I achieved all my goals. Didn't know how, but I achieved all of them within four years. That's all right, yeah. Good job. You know didn't know how, but I knew I, I had to keep kicking and ticking to get it because <laughs> I, don't like, I don't like lying to myself. So I test myself. Say that again. Mm-hmm. Don't like lying yeah, to I'm myself. Like, I think we all need to hear that because sometimes we just be lying to ourselves. <laughs> and to forget lying to somebody else. I don't yeah. want to lie to myself. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to I'm go in competition the, with me. Yeah. I'm going to this chat section and and and, mm-hmm. and 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 read some of these things off that people are saying in the in the chat section, okay? That's um right. let's see. So, we got people that's, uh, Crystal Beard is saying, just saying hello to you. Uh, Moretta is saying, hey, y'all. And then, uh, let's see, we got uh, Letitia, she's speaking. Um, USP, uh, United States. I was just explaining what USP means because you were saying, that you had gone to USP. Yeah. I, I was just explaining what USP. Yeah, yeah. USP, United yeah. States Pension. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, that's uh-huh. Yeah, that's all, that's all that comment yeah. was, as I was just okay. explaining. Yeah. And I didn't know what it meant, so I was gonna ask you what it meant. <laughs> so let me give you a breakdown. So go when, ahead. You, when you go into federal penitentiary, you have layers. So you have the least security, which is a camp. Mm-hmm. Then you have um, above the camp, you have the 
um, above the camp, you have the low, uh -huh. which is low, low, low security. Above that, you have a medium. Okay. Medium security. Then after that, you had a high security, which is the USP. Okay. Okay. It's where they put most of the dangerous people, or, you, know, you know, at a point. Mm -hmm. So these people just don't basically care about life or they never going home. Oh, okay. And then above all that, we have one more city where they lock down 23 and 1. Okay. okay so at the USP, mm -hmm. the staff don't even play with the inmates. Mm -hmm. They don't, they, the, the, the inmates practically run the penitentiary. Okay. They do okay. what they want to do. We had TVs, we ate what we wanted to eat, that phones you do it now, you get out of line. I seen a staff, I, I, I seen a lady get stabbed in the neck. Oh, okay. Like okay. I seen a, a guard, so it's one of the most dangerous penitentiaries. So oh, okay. that's just levels. Like it's a big difference from from state penitentiary. Okay. So that that's all that is. It's just levels, you know, of okay. incarceration. And the reason why I wanted to make sure that you explained that not only did I not know, we've got some young people who are looking, and and they need to know this because a lot of times, and I've heard it, you know. Well, it's nothing to go to jail. It's nothing to go to prison. But you breaking it down like Different that. Different levels. You breaking it Different down levels. like that. That puts some fear in me. But you know, Electra ain't going nowhere. <laughs> nah, you ain't going nowhere. And that was in my twenties, so you know what I thought was cool and wild. That was a whole different level yeah. of gangsterism. Okay, okay. <laughs> If that's a word. <laughs> hey, we gonna let it be the day. That's Ebonics. We it's gonna put that in. Day. <laughs> let me yes, ma'am. Okay. I'm gonna go back to the chat section. And um, one of the viewers, Crystal, said, there, there's young people that need to hear this, you know, for real. Need to hear this. Yes. And then we have a viewer, Ashley. Um, she's just uh, basically giving you a shout out and thankful mm -hmm. that you're on um let's see uh we have another viewer uh is saying that's important to point it out uh stick it out no matter how hard it is stick it out so that tells mm -hmm. me that you're encouraging a lot of people um leticia is on here another viewer who is saying that was strong. The hustle don't change just the product. Uh, I really like, and I, and, and, and I like that statement. And if you don't mind, could you just kind of, cause she's saying it's strong. And so I'm asking you to kind of reverberate that for the audience, for new audience that might just have come on. So, so. It's like this, and I'm gonna explain it the whole way, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna show you how. Let me let me first say this, you know. Um, if it's anything that you in tune with, or you like doing, mm -hmm. again, let me say you'll never work a day in your life. So if you like doing how, mm -hmm. it's not called a job anymore. You get paid for what you like to do. Okay. That turns into your hustle. Mm -hmm. So, whatever you make depends on how hard you hustle. Mm -hmm. So if you like to find the things you like money in it, you're going to hustle harder. Mm -hmm. And if it's something, it's easier for you to do something that you like to do, you feel good waking up doing it. Yes. So yes. I tell everybody, find something that you like to do. Uh -huh. I have a body shop mm -hmm. because I love cars. Yes. I have a body shop. Only reason, I'm going to tell you how I got into that after I explain this hustle part. Okay. So the statement of the hustle don't change just the product do. Mm -hmm. The hustle have to be in you. It have to be your drive. You have to be motivated for something when you wake up in the morning. Okay. Okay, so the hustle is there. Okay. What I mean about the product just changes, the product changes on what you hustle. If you mm -hmm. sold dope, you hustled them rocks to make sure you met your quota. Mm -hmm. In my neighborhood, we made sure we got us some new shoes, a new outfit, some mm -hmm. weed, some drink, and we're going to the club on the weekend. Okay, okay. So that, yeah. that hustle kid, we knew what we had to do to what we, to get what we needed that weekend. Yeah, yeah. So now if you take off and you're doing whatever it is, like I said, when we had a candy store, I wanted to make sure I sold out. My mom used to tell me out of time, boy, you stayed running through that stuff. Yeah, yeah. because I hustled. It's about marketing yourself, promoting yourself, or whatever you're doing, and separating yourself from the rest of the people. That's where the hustle comes in. You have to bring something different to the mm -hmm. hustle. Okay. That's that's where your hustle kick in at. Mm -hmm. Being diverse, yeah. reaching more people, mm -hmm. cheaper prices, yeah. uh, 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 better product. Yeah, you know whatever it is. That's mm -hmm. why I say the product just changes. But I f naturally feel like I can sell water to a well. Yeah. I'm telling my water different. Uh -huh. Water you've been drinking. <laughs> 
they do it with the water companies all night. Mm -hmm. Look right now, you got alkaline water, mm -hmm. you got regular water, spring water, you got faucet water. Mm -hmm. So whatever a person's preference is, mm -hmm. they have everything for them. Mm -hmm. That's the hustle part about it, being diverse, having different yeah. things for them. Mm -hmm. So that, that's where the hustle part come on. Mm -hmm. So I get back to my thing, the body shops, right? Mm -hmm. I'm a car fanatic, so you know, I don't like flaws on cars, oh. none of my cars. So mm -hmm. um, my African friend, um, he's been doing my cars for eight, nine years, very loyal. Yeah, very, I think know, I saw you down there when, when I bought Brandon's car. Uh-huh, when I bought Brandon's car. Yeah, you, yeah, you met Arnold. Mm -hmm. So that's that's like a, became like a brother to me. So we had one shop, you know, uh, we had got him his own shop long time ago, just for him, silently, um, because he did so much, you know, when I need my mama car done, I'm trying to surprise on Mother's Day, he'll get it done. Mm -hmm. um, if I called him two, three in the morning and I had something I need to fix, he just broke his muscle to go get it fixed. Yeah. So um, I told him, I said, man, we need to be on a bigger scale. So it actually just jumped off. I'm a car head. Probably I needed storage for my cars because I keep 10, 12 cars, I, mm -hmm. I personally have. Um, the shop came up across the street for sale. I'm like, man, we're gonna go and buy the shop. Bought the shop. Mm -hmm. I kept the workers, mm -hmm. and just so happened, like I say, the energy with the people that I hired, mm -hmm. the other people I hired, and um, did like we kind of all had the same mm -hmm. thing of taking care of our family, producing good work, no half step, staying late, going the extra mile. That's the hustle part. Going the extra mile, staying late even when you don't feel like doing it. You know, just because you know you want to get it done. And a lot of businesses are successful and a lot of things work for you when you're known for keeping your word or yeah. doing what you say you're going to do. Yeah. That plays a big part in it, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And being honest, if something messed up and give me another day, we're going to get it done. Yeah. You know, whatever the case may be, you know, presentation is everything, yes. you know. And uh, my, it's crazy because me and my wife were just having a conversation earlier that because uh, I just went in uh, my old home that I'm selling out that I moved out. I went in and put a bunch of more money in it. And, you know, redid the floors and stuff again and did some more stuff. Mm -hmm. She was like, yeah, baby, we're going to get the money for that one now because, you know, I believe in, I can't sell nothing that I wouldn't buy. So my presentation got to be good for me to mm -hmm. say I want it, even mm -hmm. though I'm selling it. Yeah. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, you know, okay. I sell to myself before I sell to you. Yeah, okay. We, we, we running out of time. We got about five more minutes. So I'm going to run through these... Okay. Uh, before Zoom cut us yes, off. <laughs> so I'm going to go through okay. these. Uh, I'm not going to get through all of them because there's so many in my vision, okay? Okay. Yes, ma'am. So, uh, choose, I can't, I can't call it. Okay, so listen, I'm going to go down here to where it's saying, um, thank God for the pardon. Look at success. Crystal said that. One of the viewers, uh, a, a viewer said, just speaking to you by the name of Shalandra. We got another. That's my wife. Oh, yeah. what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and then she's speaking to the panel as well. I'm so sorry. And then I'm going to uh, say this last thing here because it's so important. Letitia's mm -hmm. son, Ian. The baby boy says, Ian, yeah. Ian says, <laughs> I would really like to meet you. I hear good stuff. I want to be a business owner. And I thank you for letting me put my candy machine yeah, in your shop. I would like to meet you in person. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, he already started, man. And that, let me say that for the thing cut off too, man. Mm -hmm. We have to teach our children how to be entrepreneurs before because one thing they do, they tell you you have to go to school to work for somebody. Mm -hmm. But guess what? You don't have to go to college and do all that to be a business owner. We're going to hire the people that went to college to work for us to make us our money. Yeah, yeah. So don't, 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 don't get caught up in that. Oh, you got to have these degrees. No, you have to have a degree to work for somebody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have to. You don't have to have a degree to work for yourself. You don't have to have a degree to work for yourself. You just hire the people with the degrees to make you your money. That's yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> well, before we get off here tonight, I know Jack is going to have some final words as well. 
I just want to just say thank you from the bottom of my heart for coming on here. And look here, we do, we're, we're going to close out this season at the end of June. And then our new season will start up in September. I do want you to come back on here uh, because what you said yes, is so powerful. And one thing about this podcast, hey, we interview zero to a hundred. So if you know some people, yeah. we will interview yeah. them. We don't have no, it's, um, it's no age limit because everybody got a story. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Jackie, you want Thank to you. And thank y'all. I just, I just want to thank you also. And I really appreciate your candor, your openness, and your willingness to really tell us the true story. Thank yes. you. Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank y'all. I thank y'all for having me on. I appreciate everything. Mike, you know. I, before we get off, yes, ma'am. Jackie, I know she's going to ask me this after we get off. We need uh, your business information oh. because when we go yes. back, yes, ma'am, clean up the video. She's the technical mm -hmm. director, so what she's going to do is when people hit this I video, I think it's in your text, ain't it? Is it I think it, it's in your text, uh, uh, Okay. Let me see. But if not, I'll send it out to you. I know I know you have and, it. And send it again. Just go ahead and resend it. I will. Resend the I'll text send the business then. card and everything. Yes, And then, Director, yeah. you send that to me, and I will yeah. get that posted. Yeah. I'll get that so posted. So you won't see the yeah. video. You can go out there and see it tonight, but it's not going to be the clean copy because we got to clean Right, 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 right. And what I say, clean it up is anything at the front end that we didn't like. Right, the, right, right, right. The broadcasting system and stuff. Jackie, clean yes, it up. I'm talking about uh, she's cleaning it up. <laughs> we gotta fix the fix the <laughs> description and the title and all that stuff. So we'll get all okay. that done. So, and thank you for, uh, but we gotta go because our time yeah. is up. But so. thank you for inspiring That's me fine, too. Man. Okay. Thank y'all. I thank y'all for Mike. Let thank me be you. a part of it. Yes, okay. <laughs> bye. Bye. Thank y'all. See y'all later. Okay. Bye bye. <laughs> bye.